Hello, this is Painting Your Pickout, and I'm Larry Kitchen. Now you'll see some tools that I'm using. This is part two of this painting, and this section begins with mixing brown and blue and reinforcing your shadows. Now you, you may have an urge not to do this as a young painting student, but I encourage you, take a picture of it, and then move on and try to make it better. And so one way to make this thing better is to have a full range of black or dark values in your illustration. So I'm simply mixing turpanoid with the brown and black <clears throat> or brown and blue, and it gives a kind of a simulated colorful black tone. So there's, there's more dipping into that, those two piles of paint. And you can see I'm just working around looking for the darkest brown on my painting and reinforcing the shadows. I want these shadows to be uh, dark. Obviously, this is a, a bottom lit shot of Boris Karloff playing the part of Frankenstein. And I'm going to push it um, from the lightest lights to the darkest darks. Now, later on, we'll see the highlights are green in this, and I'll sneak up on those but for now the first step is to reinforce your darks now i'm using a pretty good sized brush and just the very tip of the brush for the most part and if it's a particular area like around this eye then i use my mall stick i've propped that up it has a prop on the top right and then i'm holding it with my left hand an inch or two off the surface and that helps you to have a very steady sure hand uh, you know, touch when you're zeroing in. You'll notice I work sort of around the, the painting, uh, unifying these darks. Now at first you'll feel like you're messing your painting up when you add this dark into the shadows because it, it's not unified. But after you paint uh, several areas, then there's a tipping point. It's that turning point when it seems to go together. And that is dealing with the principle of unity. So if you continue to build your dark shadows all around your painting, then at some point it looks like it goes together. So if you hear that little voice in the back of your mind saying, no, 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 I'm messing it up, then just remember what I've said. You know, it has to be unified and you have to move these shadows all around your work for it to seem to go together. So we're, we're moving toward a pretty unified shadow illustration at this point. <clears throat> and you'll notice the next part is painting in the highlights. So this is scraping with a razor blade and then wiping it with a paper towel. Throw that paper towel away. Don't hang on to it because you'll get paint on your fingers. I'm mixing white with a little pink tone and yellow so just think in terms of uh, those four values or hues. I'm testing it right there. And now I'm going to work at the other end of the value spectrum. And I'm going to push the highlights. Now this is the fun part because I'm going to change my highlight um, from a light brownish tone to this yellow green. And it will make it look like there's a green light from below shining up on his face. Now these are little dollops of green. It has a little bit of a pink and yellow in it, so it's got a touch of a fleshy tone uh, to it. And over the life of this painting, I will push uh, that green right up to that pile of green that you see on the right of my palette. But for now, I'm kind of hitting it with a light touch and just gently working up my highlight tones. There's the bridge of the nose and the point of the nose. Now the bone in the cheek. Anything that catches uh, the light as the, as the spotlight is shined up uh, will reflect. I love that catch light in the eye. That's one of my favorite parts to paint on a, on a portrait. You don't need a three hair brush to do this sort of thing either. If you practice it and have uh, a light touch, then that, the very tip of that paintbrush will do the job. You notice I don't choke up on the paintbrush. Uh, I use the back end of the stick of the brush 
And it's a much more comfortable way to paint. And I think you'll like it if you'll practice, uh, you know, daubing your colors, holding uh, the end of your paintbrush. Now, we were talking about unity before, so uh, it's time to move on. I'm going to add a little red into this. Now, why red? Well, red is uh, the blood coming up through the skin. So unless you add some red or pink tone into uh, your work, um, you know, red hue will will give it a little bit of life. And if, if you leave that out, if you don't put a little bit of red in there, then he really will look dead. And kind of, um, could I use the word unnatural? Now, red is the opposite of green on the color wheel. And so now we've got opposites working against each other, warms against cool. And I've found over the years that that makes a painting more exciting also. So anytime you have... Uh, a choice of a hue or a color on a painting, you want to look for its opposite, you know, opportunities to use the opposite color with it. That will make your paintings really bounce, really sing. I hesitate to use the word pop because it's overused, but it really does make it vibrate a little bit more. And you'll notice the red against the green really does something. If you hit your space bar and back, back up about three minutes, uh, before I started using the red, and you'll see the difference. The opposite colors on a painting improve the painting quite a bit and brings life to it. So there I've got green on the bottom and r moving up to a, a gradient blend up to red. And it's really a beautiful thing. Now, on to pushing the colors. I found that uh, you want to push your colors. Now, as a young painter, you may have this feeling that, oh, I need to quit before I ruin it. And people will tell you, are you finished? You know, don't, don't go too far. Don't ruin it. And I've always hated that because it keeps people from making more progress than they could make on a work. I say, take a picture of it and save it and then try to make it better. You know, keep pushing your works. Keep learning. You know, that, that last 10% of a painting uh, could make all the difference in your next painting and could make all the difference in this one. It could really improve it dramatically. And I think you'll see that because I pushed the green and now I'm pushing dark red uh, into these areas, I think you'll notice that I keep getting more and more into this painting. And it's a more exciting painting because of that. And I have pictures of the early stages. So if I wanted to print a copy of that and frame it, I certainly could. So uh, you'll notice, uh, I worked on the nose there. I, after I stepped back, I realized the bridge of his nose was really wide. And I also noticed uh, that I wanted some, some more rich brown in the transition where green turns to red and then red turns to black. And between red and black is brown. And by the way, colors do intensify right as they turn into shadow. So you'll notice uh, by looking at any color photo that has a strong shadow on it, that as that surface turns, for some reason, our retinas and cameras pick up that a color is a little bit more saturated or intense right before it falls into darkness. So that's a helpful thing to know and look for as you're, as you're working on a painting. Now you'll notice there, right now I'm working on the edges, sort of red edges, where that transition is from the shadow moving up to brown and then into the light that green light so that's uh if you will really there there's the transition in the background where you see the green to the red uh, is there and i just keep working on that i'm pushing at both ends now i'm going to really bounce that green light up i'm going to get as much as i can out of this this eerie looking green light from a from below you don't get a chance to paint this kind of a, a work very often, so I'm going to make the most of it. And as my highlight kind of sets up and fades, then I punch back into it. You can paint your highlight several times uh, to get more and more intensity out of it. And you'll notice it seems like he's getting in a, in a darker and darker room because I'm pushing the other end, the highlight of the piece, uh, further and further along. Now, finally, in the, in the end of this painting, I'm looking for small details 
uh, to lay in that would add a little bit more realism. Uh, so in a sense, a painting can be kind of blocky and uh, you'll have some quick strokes in it. But if you'll go back and work on the little transition areas where things move from one color to another and add little dollops, little dollops of uh, value, like that little dot in that shadow area, uh, it adds the illusion of detail. So that's what I'm after. Little, little pock marks, little holes, little, little uh, spots sticking up and catching a little bit of light. I think I'm using the word a little too much. But I think you'll see that by pushing at both ends, the highlights and the shadows, you really can get quite a bit more improvement. Oh, look what I'm working on up top. I'd forgotten. One thing about Frankenstein is this big square skull. So a little bit of his skull catches that green light. It must be sticking, sticking out and forward. And then I touch that scar across his forehead where uh, Dr. Frankenstein must have uh, done a little, little frontal lobotomy work there. Now I'm adding a few dots of, uh, of highlight uh, on, on his right cheek and, and above his lip. Just kind of bouncing around, trying to increase uh, the light there. You'll notice, too, on my palette, uh, there's some mixing, but there's not a whole lot of mixing. If you limit your color scheme and stay within that range from that light green to that, to that red to brown and black, uh, that keeps you on track. That keeps you... Uh, you know, within your plan. And I think that's uh, a limited color scheme can be a very good uh, aspect to uh, any illustration. You saw me touch my finger to the surface a few seconds ago, and that's okay, but I do want to encourage you, if you blend with your fingers, try not to do that too much, and immediately afterwards, clean your finger off. You don't want to absorb a lot of the pigments and uh, terpenoid that is in oil paint. For that reason, some painters will wear a glove on their left hand uh, because many painters will use uh, kind of a rubberized glove to hold the towel that they clean their brush in. One thing you're not seeing between each paint stroke is that uh, many times if I do a, a change of color, I'm wiping my paintbrush on bounty paper towels to clean it so that I don't dip into an area with a contaminated brush. Right there, I'm trying to strengthen up that shadow that comes off the nose, working into the dark shadows on the forehead. So now I'm pushing the darks. You see how I move back and forth from uh, pushing the shadow and then I'll jump over and push the highlight for a while. And you know, the last 40% of a painting is just that, you know, push both ends. There I'm strengthening up uh, the darks of the shoulder. For some reason, Frankenstein in the movie wore a suit. I always thought that was kind of strange. There's a little textured edge of his, of his rough hair. I think in a minute I go back and push a little highlight on that dark. And so you've got um, a balance there between the darks uh, of the work and the highlights of the work. And, you know, some, some aspect of this pick out actually uses the midtone that, that was there created with your oil wash. But in reality, uh, by the end of this painting, I've probably touched every part of this surface. So that original brown drawing was there as a, as a skeleton, if you will, uh, as, a, as a base for your painting. Uh, you'll go back in and touch every part of your work and make it better. Now the truth is, I could have stopped with the brown tintype looking image and been happy. And some students want to do that. They just want to barely touch it after they've picked it out. But look what they'd miss. They miss all this fun and experimentation and discovery of improving the work and bringing more life and fun to it. And so, um, you know, whether you paint or color pencil on top of your pickout, I really encourage you, you know, 
if you have that feeling of, oh, I've got to stop before I ruin it, I encourage you, take a picture, save that for posterity, and try to make the work better. Now, right there, I just noticed from my photo reference that his eyelids uh, had some color to them and had sort of a gradient blend. And so I pull that reddish brown back in there. And what a nice contrast that is to the green that's right above it. So I nearly missed that. I'm adding a little interest into the forehead, which, you know, gives the eye movement a little bit something more to look at up where his hair is draped down over that skull. So I'm just looking for uh, interesting spots to add uh, add to this work and and uh, you know continuing to ask that question uh, you know what can make it better one painter said squint all the time so that you see your darks he actually wrote uh, the word squint three times on the the wooden bar on his easel because when you squint you can see the shadows of your work better now that's an interesting move I just made there. I added bright green into the background. Now that's kind of a risky move because you don't want your hero in the background. You want your hero to be, you know, your focal point, the most intense point of the painting. So because of that green that's in the background, now look what I do. I'm going to push it even more. I thought I was done with the highlights, but... As you push, you know, one thing, it'll make you push the other things for unity's sake. So now that rich, you know, vibrant green is going to be added into, uh, you know, all these areas, sort of bounce that around the whole painting quickly. It doesn't take that long, but it will help it. It'll tie it into that background and really look like it's got a green light from above or from below uh, that is, you know, draped all across you know, this piece. Maybe one more touch on the on the eyes. One more punch to give a highlight across the nose. And I'm pushing a little bit of white back into that green. I don't know. You know, we're getting down to the end. Oh, look at there. I forgot the bolt that's sticking out of his neck. So that's kind of a fun little spot to increase. Well, we're getting down to the last few parts of this. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a close-up of the old fellow. Pretty buttery painting, but uh, overall, I sure had some fun. I hope you enjoyed it, too. And listen, I hope you have good luck with your painting. And remember to push your work. Don't quit too soon. Goodbye.